Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video and hope you're enjoying our series where I'm talking on I'm single and I know it. Yes, that's the series that we're doing uh, for all the, you singles out there and you're just wondering what to do or how to equip yourself into the next area or how to find a life partner or how you've got to equip yourself for the area of marriage. And today I'm going to talk about a very important aspect that you need to look at while choosing a life partner because a lot of people neglect this aspect when they are about to choose a life partner. They talk about a lot of things. I'm going to talk about other characteristics in other future videos, but in this one, I'm going to talk about one important aspect that I think is very important, but many people neglect is to watch out for your crushes. Yes, that's what I meant. Um, you might have had a lot of crushes. Okay, you might have had a crush on this person or that person when you were, had a childhood crush on, you know, all these things are great. And we think, you know, this part of life and um, you know, I had a crush on this person and then I had a crush on that person. But you know what? Uh, let me go and choose somebody else and get married. But uh, you need to understand something very important here. When you have to choose a life partner, you need to understand it's very easy for you to get attracted or to made to fall in love with those feelings and all of that with anybody. OK, uh, I've heard, um, you know, preachers say this, uh, that um, you know, it, 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 any two people, it's very easy for them to actually fall in love or s things like that. But, you know, if you really want your marriage to be long lasting, if you really want to be satisfied in your life, if you really want your life to, um, you know, be meaningful and happy and the kind of life that God wants you to live, then you got to pay attention to the kind of people you have had crushes on. Why? Because this is how I understood this important thing. See, if you had a crush on a person A, you had a crush on a person B or crush on a person C, you got to pay attention to what are the similarities or what are the cyclic events that are seen? What makes you like these people? You, they may not be 100% the same way like the rest of the people, but there will be something in common, something about them that makes you like, that's something that's cyclic in all your, the people you had a crush on. There's something in common about the way they look or the way they are talented or something about them that makes you like them, okay? If you notice, every single crush that you had explicitly would have had certain things which are repetitive, which are common, which are unique to their case. Pay attention to that. I mean, I would say this, like probably the way they look, their hairstyle, maybe something that's attractive to you or maybe their talent, which is attractive to you. But I want you to note down and f look at what are those things which are common among all the crushes that you ever had. Or in other words, some infatuations in the kind of people you're naturally attracted to. See, here's the thing. In the pretext of choosing a life partner, what many people say is, I want, I want to neglect all my desires. I want to neglect all my longings. I want to neglect all my uh, passions and, uh, you know, whatever I like, my dreams. And I want to do only the will of God. You know, people sound very religious when they say that, where they sound very, they're so they're, you know, right. Uh, they just fell from heaven kind of for people. You know, they're so close to God, you know, not my will, but God's will. But there's a problem in that religious approach. The problem is they think that their desires are hostile to God. Whereas if you notice, let me tell you something, let me clarify this. Yes, uh, you may say, John, you know, the Old Testament, it says that, you know, uh, that our heart is deceitful and things like that. But can I tell you something? Today, as a new creation in Christ Jesus, the old has passed away and today you are a new creation and God has put his desires in you and God has put his dreams in you. See, God is the one who gave the dream to Joseph. God is the one who said, if you read in the Amplified Version in um, Philippians chapter 2 verse 13, it says that God is the one who put these desires, these passions, these longings in you so that by fulfilling them, you fulfill your purpose. 
And God is the one who said in Psalms, you know what, delight in me and I will grant the desires of your heart. Why would God grant the desires of your heart if he says that your desires are bad? See, there's a thin line of difference between evil intentions and desires which are not of God and the desires which God has placed in you. The dreams, the way he has wired you so that you naturally desire for a person like that. that naturally you get attracted to a person like that. And naturally he has wired you so that you know you will, you will only fall for or have crush on a kind of a person like that. And you are naturally will be satisfied only with a person like that. So when God is the one who created you like that, you got to pay attention to the way he has created you and you got to choose somebody who acts or law who matches up to that expectation or that wiring by uh, how you have been wired for. Think about it. Because God made no mistake when he created you or put the dreams or the desires or the passions or the longings in you because that's the way you have been wired. So here's the problem. If you choose anybody else apart from the way you are naturally been wired to or inclined to, you will not have complete satisfaction of your life. The scripture says, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Lo satisfaction, abundant life. Jesus said in John 10, 10, I've come that you might have life and have the real life. It's scriptural to have that life and satisfaction. Because that's the way he put it in you. That's the way he wired you. The Bible says that God has cunningly fashioned you in the Amplified Version in Psalm 119.73. Because that's the way you have been wired. That's how naturally inclined you are to be attracted to a person of that sort. So try, don't try to run away from the way God created you. Don't try to you know, uh, run away from who you naturally are. In the pretext of saying, you know what, I want to do the will of God. Don't do that. I'm going to talk more in detail about choose, how to choose a life partner. And there are certain characteristics that you got to look out for. I'm not saying go and, you know, you find somebody who matches uh, your dream girl or dream boy. Just go for them. No, I'm not saying that. But I want you to not neglect the aspect of the fact that you get naturally inclined to like a person like this. Pay attention to that. If you're naturally inclined to like a person who looks like this or who has these characteristics, pay attention to that. Pray about it and ask God to bring you somebody who matches those expectations. You know why? Because I, I, I'm telling you, I've seen families, I've seen people where even though they are married and years later, they still fall for people who, you know, I wire uh, the kind of people they are naturally wired to fall for. So you know I, I, that's the problem. If 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 you don't choose somebody um, who f f the kind of person that you are naturally wired to ch fall for, you can fall for a kind of person like that. If, you know, in other words, extramarital affairs and all these things can happen because you will not see the satisfaction in your life. So when you have to choose, choose, don't neglect the aspect of your desires. Don't let anybody tell you, you know what, God's will, you got to let go of your desires. Listen, there are certain aspects of your desires, some evil intentions or envy or, you know, some things that need to be dealt with. If there are some things that God wants to shape in you, allow him to do it, but don't go to the extent where you neglect the way you're naturally wired and naturally attracted to so that you end up in frustration. That's what happens to so many people today. They're in frustration because temporarily they will be happy because you know what? I'm happy now because I got married and then those feelings and all of that. But then if you're not married to the person that you naturally get attracted to, as days go by, when the feelings and all of that go down, 
because you know those feelings are all temporary those things are not going to run your marriage it's going to be a commitment it's going to be uh, you know a lifelong covenant and when you know it's going to be a monotonous thing can you hold on in that season that's when you can easily get attracted to somebody that you are naturally wired for so if you can choose your life partner wisely to choose somebody uh, who is like your crush or who has those characteristics that you naturally are wired to fall for, then you can, you know, have, be able to protect yourself. You will be able to, uh, you know, have a more satisfying life. You will be able to live the life that God has created you to live. Amen. I would love to hear from you. Hope this blessed you. I want you to like, comment, share on this with all your friends and loved ones. And I'm telling you that we will be talking more on these topics. And if you have any questions that you would like to ask, feel free to ask. I will be there to help you. God bless you.